2000s the book industry was like graphic novels are going to save us let's just give a book deal to all these cartoonists yeah well because i was part of that whole sweep and uh got the book deal mm, what's funny about that part of comics though is like those of us who did get a book deal we were like that's it we're rich we quit our waitressing jobs but then you hear about the money that like real real quote unquote writers get and you're like oh, oh. <laughs> yeah like we we're just excited to get any money mm -hmm. um but i mean it's not really you can't really compare it because it's like the graphic novel genre is really small why would they give us tons of money but it gave enough people like the boost to be like oh i can make a like a real career out of this yeah and then, i don't know if that boost was sustainable but well, it's split into thirds too. So like, that's another really, cause as like a New York cartoonist, like you were, that must've been nearly impossible to, to live where it's like, you get a book deal and then they're like, here's one third of it. You get the other third in a year. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's still like that. Like I have a book deal right now, um, but I signed it two years ago. And so it's, it's like, I just missed the deadline a couple of times. Um, but yeah, it's the same thing. We're like, oh, here, this is nice. And then you're like, oh, wait a minute. And you do the math and it's less than a minimum wage. <laughs> but, yeah. but I mean, it, we, it's stupid to complain about it because we chose it. Nobody made us do this. Yeah, that's right. When we were, when you and I were first starting out in comics, where it was just like, let's see how much we can piss off people and yeah, you know, <laughs> curse everybody else. Well, no, that was a big element. It was like, we all thought we were pushing the envelope, but then yeah. looking back, it's like, oh, we were just 22. Like, I, th I thought I was being like super funny and stuff. And now I'm just looking at it. I'm like, I can just tell like, this is a 23 year old, you know? Yeah. I mean, the humor, I'm more embarrassed about a lot of the jokes because they just aren't good. And also back then we didn't have Twitter and Instagram where the jokes, like they kind of are just built in and they come a lot faster and they're good. So when people, sometimes I'll look at someone's Twitter and I'm like, I would have like taken one of these jokes and run with it so far and made a whole comic about it. And it's just a tweet for them. Mm -hmm. And like comedy just got so much better and so much faster. So looking back, I'm like, why did I think that this should be a four panel comic? It's literally nothing. Yeah. Well, do you think that you're as funny now as you were in 2006? Can you write comedy as easily? Uh, I do think I can write it faster because you just sort of learn how to keep up with the you know the cultural way it moves the zeitgeist of humor um and twitter helps with that. i'm not on like main i'm not on, if you look at my twitter it's just like buy my book mm -hmm. <laughs> but just other platforms that i talk on um it does seem faster and i it's changed the way i structure a joke in my comics now it, they would just kind of be put in anywhere say there's you know six panels it'll be the joke will be on like panel three maybe not panel six mm -hmm. it won't be at the end anymore it's just kind of peppered in so it's more conversational so if you look at the page it doesn't hit the same like this is a mm -hmm. comic with a joke at the end mm -hmm. but if you're reading it hopefully you'll pick up that like oh that was a funny thing to say and then it, the story carries on I mean I'm telling the same story right the story of my life isn't going to change because it's my life just the yeah. events will change but the way I tell it would I'd like it to be a little more sophisticated than fart party yes right <laughs> Thank you. I'd like, to, I'd like to aim a little higher. Well, I mean, like if you're going to tell like a longer narrative, it's, and you want it to be funny, it's, it really gets tiring for a reader to read a book where it's just like, burr, 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 ha, 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 turn the page, meh, 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 ha, 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 you know, like it's better yeah. to just kind of mix in the stuff and then. Yeah. But you know. Unless that's the intention, right? Like you're making like, here's a joke book, sort of. Read yeah, it on the be. toilet. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, if I'm trying to tell a story now, I'm like, I don't really also want to give people an easy out. Like when you're reading those books, you're like, oh, I read five and I'm done. Mm -hmm. you know, like, I'll pick it up later. I want people to stay in it because it's actually a story now. So yeah. Uh, another thing I realized is that I always 
I take humor from like really uncomfortable stuff. Mm -hmm. Like that's like my favorite kind of humor. And that's like what I like writing is like somebody awful coming up to you on a bus who's like, you know, his tooth falls out of his mouth onto your, a book you're reading or something like that. Like that, I like that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> little gallows humor kind of stuff, a little bit like. Yeah. So, I mean, I've done like an entire, I did this book called Fonte Bukowski and that's all it is, is like just really uncomfortable shit. Yeah. That, that book is like endlessly just stuff you're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but like in, in a funny way so yeah well so was fire party though fire party was just like ugh. but you know i reread uh, museum of mistakes um the past couple days and it is funny because it's like it is so young mm -hmm. you know it's like it's it's so of that time i was like really taken back to that era because i when i first started doing comics you were like what i thought it was like the hippest cartoonist and like you had like a, I think you had, I was following you on MySpace or something at the time. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. And you had a, a blog. And then I've said this before on the channel, where I've talked about like my early uh, attempts at a career in comics where like, I would just, cause you would post any press you got. And I felt like, okay, well that's great because like if these people will write about her work then they're gonna like my work, you know? Cause mm -hmm. I felt like I was aiming for the same, uh, like vein of comics as you were. So I would just send my mini comics to whoever had given you a good review, you know. Had that work out for you? Uh, not as well as it did for you, but <laughs> but it was okay. But also, I mean, it's good because, um, man, like people would like. I felt like you got so much. There's so much drama around your comics all the time. Like I just felt like people were always being mean. <laughs> shit. Like I mean, I think a lot of that is just because of the so like why I covered a lot of the, the meanness or like if someone talked about me in the media or any kind of review like why I put all that stuff online was because it was new to me too and I was so excited like mm -hmm. that anyone was reading my work I just couldn't believe it so I was like really would mention anything or any feedback I got I would you know go ahead and play into it I was just exciting to have work out there and see people talking about it but in the same it's so funny to hear your perspective of that because I feel like we came up at the same time in that whole time while all that was happening like I was still like sleeping in the, on the floor of a closet in San Francisco and then like moving to New York and having all the roommates and moving around. And then like everything was, you know, weighted tables like throughout most of that. So it's so funny to hear that like, yeah, anyone thought uh, any differently. It just felt like I was in Kansas or something while like everybody else was like having this great time and stuff, you know. Aren't you happier now in a small town than, than you would be if you were in New York or San Francisco or something? Um, not, no, I really love New York. Um, and I like miss it every day, but the life I live in this small town would be very different word in New York. Cause like I married the, uh, the boyfriend from fart party mm -hmm. and he doesn't like the city. Mm -hmm. Um, and I would never want to make somebody live in the place they hated. And I don't hate this small town. I, I think it's actually very nice. So that's a good compromise. Uh, and I got a kid now and not that I'm against raising kids in the city. Cause I think it'd be really fun but it'd just be harder because I'd be away from family. So yeah. it just makes sense for me to be here. But I do miss New York a lot. Yeah, it's because you were like such a city gal. And like now you're like in the nature all the time. Like every time I see your Instagram, it's like you guys are on a hike somewhere. I yeah. think I'm just, I have to, I try really hard to adapt to my circumstances. So mm -hmm. while I was in the city, I like loved the city and I taught myself about history and architecture. Now I'm in nature. So I'm teaching myself about like trees and nature and I garden a lot like I just try to not hate where I am which doesn't mean it's easy I definitely had a couple of years after I left the city where I was just like well I live in a cow town and I'm a city gal uh -huh. <laughs> but then I got used to it and now I love it so hey so you're doing the museum of mistakes you're reprinting it with uncivilized yeah uh, Tom's gonna put it out hopefully this fall cool and so. what what is different about that version that you're doing with Tom? Um, there's a few new comics in it and a redesign. It's mostly just because um, the one we, the run we did was really small and it's been out of print for a long time. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I was doing stuff with Annie and Koyama and Koyama shut down. Um, so I'm just kind of shifting stuff around and I wanted to get that one out again because it'd been out of print for so long. Um, and I like Uncivilized and I like Tom, so I was glad it worked out. Yeah, and um, 
did you ever try and pitch anything to Fantagraphics or Drawn a Quarterly or anything like that? I <laughs> I tried to pitch a book to Drawn and Quarterly and Fantagraphics actually a couple of years ago, which is the book I'm working on now. Um, I have a different publisher for it, but my art is not up to snuff for Drawn and Quarterly, and I know that. Um, like I know they have they have a you know a, a certain bar that you gotta hit art wise. Oh. Um, and I'm aware of that, and I figured it was a long shot in that, but I, feel that I don't remember quite clearly exactly what happened because it was a couple of years ago, but I remember Tom had said no, and then I was on a forum and I was like, but why? <laughs> and I like pushed him to tell me why, uh, and I feel bad about that. People should be able to say no without yeah. pestering them. Um, and then at Fantagraphics, I remember Eric saying like, oh, what, what happens in this book? Does it just this... The character just keeps like, you know, getting sober and relapsing and getting sober and relapsing. And at that point, that was what the book was because I was still in it. I wasn't really far removed from it. So I didn't, that was great feedback because I was like, oh, this isn't ready to go. Maybe I should get sober first. Yeah. And then I did. And now I'm working on material that's like 10 years old and it feels so far away that I can actually see how it should be. Like it doesn't yeah. need to be so repetitive. I shouldn't underestimate the reader by like hitting them over the head with something they get it like they don't have to spend a whole book on one thing do you have any like did you have any anxiety while you were just being mom like that like I uh I'm not putting my work out and people are not like my career might be suffering or something like that like did you think yeah about that? yeah of course that's I mean I hardly work at all mm -hmm. um I just started being able to get back to work and I noticed like, I, I sort of, like, as soon as I got pregnant, it felt like it also kind of lined up with leaving New York, but I just like, everything came to a halt where just no one asked me for interviews, nobody, um, like the emails stopped, the comp, like things just kind of stopped. Yeah. And I was like, oh, is that cause, is it like a career thing? Am I disappearing? Is it because I'm having a kid? Is it because of the pandemic? I think it was kind of all of them. But also, if you're not constantly berating the internet with your work, it does, people do sort of forget. Mm -hmm. But that's also a different audience. That, like, that's the immediate audience. Then when I actually put something out and you know, people respond to it, you're like, oh, you're, they're still there and I'm still here. And also, people have careers where they disappear for five years and they come back with like, books that you know do really well or 10 years like there's no I think with mini comics we all kind of got ruined by this idea that we have to have something new for every show yeah. and then a new if you're not putting out a new mini comic you better have a new book and it better be no longer than two years between that book no other industry operates that way mm -hmm. like in like writers take years and years and sometimes decades between books mm -hmm. um, only in comics are we like gotta put more stuff out gotta put more stuff out. and that's that's bonkers and we could all do it because we were all like 25 yeah but now most of us like or our generation has grown up we're having kids mm -hmm. things are getting in the way and also we shouldn't be working 16 hours a day like I want to work on my stories and that's all I do <laughs> yeah I know and but you know it really was like a cozy way of living like when I was just all my only responsibility was to draw comics and I had I lived in an apartment you know that like alone or whatever or maybe with a roommate and I could just go into my bedroom and I would just work for as long as I wanted to have some podcast playing. I mean, This American Life was really big back then. So like the latest episode or whatever is playing and I would just draw and like drink beer in my room. And mm -hmm. I think about that all the time now because it's so in the rear view mirror. Like, I think about it a lot too. Cause when people, you know, as everyone gets older they reminisce on like their youth and like the wild things they did. And yeah, there were certainly wild things in there but most of it was just when I'm reminiscing the complete lack of responsibility mm -hmm. like I had my studio apartment in New York li like I lived there for 10 years every morning I woke up made myself coffee got mm -hmm. to work worked all day maybe I went for a walk had dinner with friends came home worked some more and that life feels so foreign to me now that I'm like married with a kid and I have to do all this other stuff and just to like the freedom of that so now when I see young people Mm -hmm. half of me wants to be like 
work like work now because you'll never be able to do your work like this again and the other half of me is like stop working and go outside and like live your life because someday you'll just be trapped inside with a baby for 24 hours a day and it never ends so go outside and like have fun and go on adventures or so I, I, I looks like split way of thinking about it but I don't have like any regrets about it. like I for a long time I kind of regretted the way I did things but I'm like oh I but I did things the way I wanted how can you regret that yeah. Now I don't get to do the things I want. So just that alone should be enough for me to be like, wow, that, I got really lucky for a really long time. Yeah, Peter Bagg said uh, his like advice to young cartoonists was like, work as hard as you can when you're young because you will live off the sweat of your youth the rest of your career. It's like they will just keep reprinting and repackaging your older work and <laughs> there'll be like some reliable check, hopefully, you know? <laughs> but then uh, on the flip side, do you want that? Because I would rather the work that's getting reprinted is the work I haven't made yet. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? But I feel like a lot of, so many cartoonists in the last five years have had kids, mm. like from our group. Mm. Um, and now as that happens to like me and a bunch of other people, like that's, I only really, I, I want to read about like a wide variety of the human experience, but what I'm really going to want to read is the thing I'm going through. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Now, if you do make comics about, you know, becoming a dad, there's going to be a lot of cartoonists that want to read about it mm. because they went and did it too. Did you resent the label of like web cartoonist? Like when people would try to put that on you? I did a little bit, but I think it's because it was incidental for me. I didn't know how to put comics out any other way. Mm -hmm. So when I feel like I wasn't quite aware of what was going on in comics when I started, like I just was like, here's a joke I made and, and then I'm gonna put it on a website built by on like Dreamweaver, <laughs> like, <laughs> janky. Um, and that's where I put it, right? Cause like, what else am I gonna do? I don't know any cartoonists. So, like my friends are all uh, like non-cartoonists. So then by default, it became a web comic. And I was just a little bit confused by that. Cause I was like, well, well what else is there? Like, I don't know. So then I went to Ape was my first convention in San Francisco and I was like, oh, that people make mini comics. Like I, now I see that. Um, so I was only resentful of it because I was kind of can, like, it wasn't my intention to make a web comic. So mm -hmm. I just felt like, oh, that doesn't really apply because I don't really know what I'm doing. But yeah, it, it was, they all were at the time. But now kind of isn't every comic a web comic to some degree. Yeah, I mean, I remember you hated doing shows though, right? Like I remember seeing you at SPX one year and you were like sleeping underneath the table or something. Um, I hate, yeah. Shows are tough uh, sitting at the table and like having someone come up and read your work and then put it down and walk away without making any face. <laughs> You're just like, oh, it's just like such a punch in the heart. Um, but I loved hanging out with people after. Mm -hmm. And I like, you know, like, I liked like sharing a room with eight people and like, mm -hmm. and that part was all really fun. So that's why I did them. But the shows themselves are pretty excruciating, which is hilarious. Cause now all I want to do is go to a show. Cause I haven't gone to one since 2016. Mm. So I'm like, I just want to go to a show and like sit there awkwardly and have someone say something to me and then be confused by the interaction. And then that's <laughs> like all I want. It sounds wonderful. <laughs> yeah. What was the last show you did? It was in uh, Denver, actually, Dink. Oh, you did that? Yeah. Wait, was I there or was I not there that you year? You were there because that was when I was single and I was like, I remember no, that. would you ever date me? And you were like, no. <laughs> <laughs> you made a good comic. No out hesitancy at all. You just were like working. You're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the last show you did? That was a long time ago. Yeah, yeah I know. Oh, wait, wait. No, that's a lie. I did... Um, the one in Seattle. Oh yeah, short run? I did short run in 2017. So actually that was the last one. Yeah. But that was still a really long time ago. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Yeah. But weren't you gonna go to Columbus or something? It was, I um, I actually got the, uh, what is that residency there? The James Thurber residency. Yeah. Uh, I got it and then I got pregnant. So. Oh, did you, so you canceled that or, or did you yeah, I had moved, well, I moved it back a year and then the pandemic happened. So it was actually sort of supposed to be somewhat recent. It was like 20, 2019, just a bunch of stuff happened and I couldn't go, um, which is, 
I'm really sad that I didn't get to Columbus um, in time before, you know. Spurgeon. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why I feel like it's just, it's so sad. So I just feel like that's a big regret that I didn't get to that one. And I really loved Tom and like talked to him a lot. So I feel, I just feel like I did a disservice by being like, oh, next year, I'll go next year. I did the same thing. It was the last CXC that he put together. He had, he tried to have me as a guest, Mm -hmm. but I think I I just moved down South. I was like, I really don't want to just come back. Like I'll just do it the next year or whatever, you know? And I I feel really bad about it because I'm like, that would have been the last time I got to hang out with him. Yeah, same. But we still like emailed each other a lot. He was so funny. In the- yeah, that was a that that was a real bummer. I went to his um, <laughs> what a shitty thing to say about someone's death. What a bummer. I know. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> obviously, not the right word. I went to I did go to New York and went to his memorial right before the pandemic started. Actually, it was January mm-hmm. of 2020, um, and it was so overwhelming to see like decades of photos of him with all these cartoonists at conventions and like hanging it was just like everybody was there and like everybody loved him mm-hmm. and it was like what a I feel like he he existed in such a special time for comics and it changed a lot towards the end and continues to change and I'm not sure there would have been as enthusiastic a place for him yeah um, going forward so I feel like he just hit it perfectly oh uh, what happened with that uh, like, didn't you have like a movie deal or something? I always wanted to ask you about that. What happened with this shit? Weren't they, were they going to make like a fart party TV show? They were, yeah, a long time ago. They're going to make a fart party show. Um, I, the, the um, specifics of ownership of the work did not sit well with me. Um, looking back, I'll just say this, looking back, I should have been like, fuck it, go for it. Like, yeah. do what you want. Let's see what happens. But at the time I was like, oh, I don't really want to sign over. This character is my, me and it's my life story. And that they would have also owned um, work going forward because mm-hmm. they would, they were essentially like buying the character. Oh. Uh, so that didn't sit well. I didn't know the people involved very well. Uh, now though, looking back at some of the names, I'm like, whoops. <laughs> like, and my life might be very different had I not pulled the plug. But I also was not in a good place in my life personally to have pursued that. If that Julia had gone to LA and like tried to work in that industry, I would have been canceled. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I was just like, a, I was just like a total shithead. Like I was still drinking all the time and just, I was rude and I don't know, like I just wasn't moving through the world in like a conscious way of how not to be an, an asshole and how to treat people. And a lot of that was just, um, it was just like a side effect of having like a hard upbringing and a hard few years and like being an alcoholic. It wasn't like I was a bad person, but I wasn't living, I don't know how I, 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 I like to think I live now where I'm just more aware of other people. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I feel like I dodged a bullet by not doing that but then a couple years ago I tried actually to make a show I like put together a pitch packet with um with some friends well Lisa Hanawalt's uh partner Adam Conover you know him yeah uh so he had a production team we put together pitch packet we pitched to everybody like HBO Netflix uh Amazon all like the big people and they all said no um and that was a bummer so it was like I did try again uh, and it didn't work out, um, you know, for a variety of reasons, but it was like a big learning process and also got a lot of good material about what it's like to be in LA and and pitch shows, um, which I'll put in a book someday, Mm -hmm. but I'm not done with it. I like to think that like maybe third time's a charm and I could get, get something done someday, but. Yeah, it it was Lizzie Kaplan was going to play you, right? Yeah. Who else was going to be in it? Do you know? Uh, Lizzie was the only person, or like only uh, movie star person that I'd been talking to. And then everyone else was, I don't want to, I'm like, they were just like the executives or like, mm-hmm. um, I don't remember the name. The writers would have been important, but we didn't really have people set up. So it was just a lot of suits. Yeah. Like, that's really disrespectful to say, but like, uh, yeah, the only recognizable name would have been Lizzie. Yeah. It would have been risky, I guess. I mean, 
what are you gonna do it's like you know simon hanselman again like told me like they, they wanted to option his characters for like a cartoon on cartoon network but it's like yeah but then like what happens if the show gets canceled and you still want to do your comics and then people are seeing the comics in, in the comic shop and they're like oh is this based on that shitty cartoon that got canceled or something like what is this <laughs> i mean that couldn't but also like who cares sure yeah like Sure, if I, like, that's why I kind of wish I had said go for it because maybe you made a terrible TV show mm -hmm. and it was embarrassed and I hated it, but I could have been and been like, if people had said that, I'd have been like, yeah, I, I tried, it didn't work. Who cares? Who cares? It's like an actor in like a diarrhea commercial and then like, you always see that on a show, right? And they're like haunted by it. I would be like, yeah, I'm the guy in the diarrhea commercial. That's hilarious. <laughs> like, why, why would anybody care about what anybody does at any given point? Yeah. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, I don't know. I'm all for people saying yes to things at this point. Mm -hmm. Just why not? Why not see what shakes out? Yeah, that's true. And cartooning is like, it becomes like increasingly more difficult to survive as a cartoonist. So if anybody's ever offering you, offering you money, it's like, you should just take, you should take this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so hard to make it as a cartoonist. Um, yeah. So yeah, why not? Why say no? But also even, even going down to, to LA to like pitch that show and which like, obviously was like a massive failure just the events of of it of it like I still tell stories about like the first time the first pitch we did um was to HBO and I had I had poison oak like all down the side of my face and my neck because I had just gone on vacation <laughs> and been out in the woods so I like show up to this like the HBO they're, they're stone cold too like their whole thing is they just give you no reaction uh -huh. thank you for coming and like I was warned about that because other networks are definitely a lot nicer and more chit chat you just you can't read them at all so the whole time I'm like never pitched a show before and I'm trying to sell myself which is a really strange and awkward thing to be like try to package your whole be like this is my whole idea but also it's my real life and like how do we sell this while like trying to like do this like hide like disappear and hide behind my hair <laughs> and it's just all these experiences whether or not the outcome I wanted happened might lead up to a different outcome down the road, which is me like making a book about that whole process. So, would you have written the script that, the, that you would have pitched to HBO? Like, did you do that yourself or did you hire? Yeah, someone? we wanted to do uh, the whole thing. Like, I was going to be involved in, you know, create it, write it, do the characters, uh, which is why I like this one better than the many years ago when they were just like trying to option the book to give it to other people. Yeah. Didn't have any creative say on that. So. Yeah. Well, that would have totally changed your entire life. Like you would have been like writing and not really doing comics anymore and stuff, you know? So. Yeah. And I think it would have cut my comics career short in a way that I, I wouldn't want the work I made at that point to be the only work that existed of mine. Yeah. Um, like I'm glad I got the opportunity to keep making comics and then maybe go to that industry at a time when I feel more stable as a person and stable and like I like my work more like I'm more confident in my work mm -hmm. so. yeah wasn't that kind of what happened with Ariel Schrag like she put out a she put out some comics and then she got into like tv writing and then and yeah she wrote for um the l word yeah. for a long time yeah and then she made a movie recently I guess it was a few years ago um and it's not but her work I mean, she still makes comics, but like the work she'd put out before that, I felt it was just so solid and special mm -hmm. that it was fine for her to go and do, and it, people should go and do something else if that's what they want to do. Um, I think that if I had gone and done TV writing and just left the work I had had, I wouldn't have felt as good about it as I hope that Ariel feels about her work. Um, but then she came back, she's doing comics again. So, and she writes like book books. So I really expanded life for her mm -hmm. do you do you remember was there a time when you were like you just started off doing fart party and you were like trying to pitch it to like all the comics publishers uh and then like do you remember that era and like what their reaction was to your work and stuff was it similar to the last time you tried yeah it was a lot of rejection um yeah. as successful as some of my work has been there's been much more rejection than there has been having things accepted Mm -hmm. um because a lot especially early on it was just like okay but what is this it's just like jokes and you're a waitress and you your boyfriend's funny I don't which I is all very valid 
Um, so it was overwhelmingly people just being like, no. <laughs> like, what is this, a hobo spider? What is this? <laughs> <laughs> I, thankfully, I never pitched that stuff around. Although, in retrospect, I'm like, I think that was my best work. <laughs> Uh, that was another thing I used to do a lot. Like if an author was coming to Denver, I would like make sure that I would stand in the line where you're supposed to go get the, you know, your, their book signed or your book signed by them. Mm -hmm. And then when I got up to them, I would, oh, by the way, here's my, I'm a cartoonist, here's my mini comic. I did a lot of that. I was just thinking the other day. Yeah, I were like, when I, when I first got my book published for our party, I would like always have one in my bag. This is really embarrassing though. So I did it to the extent where like I would leave a copy at a cafe or I would give one and I would just like, I was trying to get waitressing jobs in New York and I would, I remember giving the book to like the person who was, you know, I was like, are you guys hiring? They're like, go talk to the manager. So the manager came out and I gave them fart party. Oh. Why on earth would someone be like, <laughs> oh, okay, you're hired to wait tables because you made this book called fart party and like... <laughs> Why? Why would I do that? Why? And also, those books are out of print now, and I'm like, I wasted one. I could have I it. Yeah, but I was just so excited, and it's so embarrassing at how many people I would mail them to like celebrities. Just oh. I would like. I remember googling like where does Tina Fey work, and then sending it like legit to Thirty Rock because like, <laughs> that's where she worked. Yeah, but a lot of that must have worked because you had like a. You had pretty good quotes on the back of your books. Not from sending books to 30 Rock. None of that worked. You can't just send books to celebrities at the address you think they would. <laughs> but then, so you're saying Ben Ray got those quotes for you on the back of that? Book? No, I, who, who is? Like, like Douglas Rushkoff? Uh, well, Douglas Rushkoff and I were actually, we're going to make a book together. Um, oh, wow. So that's how that happened. We were going to make a book about pregnant teenagers he was gonna write it and I was gonna draw it and then it didn't work out um but a lot of the people who do who the quotes come from like Janine Garofalo who wrote the an intro to one of my books yeah she got the book from uh Henry Rollins and I was just like why would why would he why would Henry Rollins have a book and like that's a question I'll never have an answer to um that's but that's yeah and then my friend uh Liam introduced me to Janine and she told me so I was just, it's like these weird like connections of not sending things through the mail just someone got a hold of something and then someone knew them that kind of stuff so but it really your work caught on really fast it seems like like you, you probably within the first year it seemed like you had a big following um it did and I'm really grateful for that and I can't explain it because there are I don't I don't know but um I'm glad it happened you think it, 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 there were just weren't as many comics online at that time? I think, I feel like maybe that could, had something to do. Yeah, there were, the pool of cartoonists was pretty small. Um, mm -hmm. But I think my early work, like, because I didn't know what I was doing, you know, have you heard of the Dunning-Kruger effect? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, so like, when you don't know anything, you're like, I can do this. Mm -hmm. So you like go hard, right? And you do it and you do, and it works is the thing. And I think that really worked to my benefit where I didn't go to art school. I didn't really read that many comics and I just started making them. And I was like, well, this is easy. I can do this. Anyone can do this. And yeah. then I had the hubris to put it out there and be like, you should read this and, mm -hmm. you know, send an, e an email to the comics journal or send a book to TSA. <laughs> like yeah. I just thought I could do that. And so I did it. And then as I got more into comics, I was like, oh, I really shouldn't have done that. Like that, I shouldn't have like gone on to the comics journal boards full of those dudes and been like, check out my my work, fartparty.org. And everyone later, you're like, oh, you don't do that. You don't go and like, just link your website. Hmm. But why not? It worked. Yeah, I, I would never do that now because now I know better. Yeah. That's kind of a shame. Like there's something I, lost there. Oh, I totally relate to that. I did the same. I was you know, like really young. And I felt like I'm going to be like, a, obviously I'm going to be like a really important cartoonist. So like people are like, you know, I, I would introduce myself to people uh, and try and make them feel like they were about, they were meeting somebody who someday was going to be really, really interesting. Like maybe I'm not like great right now, but you're going to be really happy you met me. You know, like I had this like crazy confidence about my comics and, you know, mm -hmm. and I would trash if like any cartoonist was mean to me or whatever, like I would just totally trash them in my own comics and stuff. Like I just did not care. Didn't think about burning bridges or anything, just did all that shit. 
and all this stuff. Like, but I just had this whole like this crazy confidence that just did not reflect my own work at all. You know, I I miss that. Like, I miss having that kind of confidence though. Because um, now, now I'm just like, hello world. I, I made a book. I hope you like it. And then like scamper back to my yeah 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know, but it's like, it was so small scale back then. Like I would print like 25 copies of my mini comic cause that's all I could afford. Mm -hmm. And then like, I would be really, really like strategic about who got those comics. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Gotta make sure I send one on Tom Spurgeon so he can write about me on the comicsreporter.com, you know? <laughs> the Daily Crosshatch, I gotta send them a copy of. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about them too. Yeah, I mean, it, things are also much simpler. Now I'm like, I don't even know who, who do you send stuff to? Yeah. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't personally do that anyway. That's, I'm like, that's Fanagraphics job. That's not me. <laughs> yeah. That's the other benefit of, you know, having being more established as someone else has to do that for you. Yeah. And not just like, I guess I'll put it on Instagram. Yeah. And when they don't do it, you just get to be pissed off at them. Like, fuck, man, <laughs> that publisher sucks. Like they didn't do anything. The book came out and nobody even saw it. It's bullshit. But it's like you didn't do anything for it. Like, you didn't. Yeah, I'm like, that's certainly not my fault. Mm -hmm. I put on my Instagram story. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I used to. I need to like use those, those like self publishing skills again, where it was like you really learn how to be your own publicist. Mm -hmm. and, but then at a certain point, you kind of forget that stuff. Yeah, I think for comics, though, we should always remember how to do that because like I've been fortunate enough to work with good publishers who have done this stuff. But it's still at another point. You you're like they're they're a publisher will only reach a certain audience, which is bigger. It's supposed to be bigger than yours, right? But also they might miss a lot of like the comics audience, which is like working with Quam was great because everyone in comics knew when a Quam book came out. Mm -hmm. um, and I like the publisher I'm working with now a lot, but they also work in a different world. So I feel like I kind of um, would need to step back into the comics world to like alert them because I put out a book about New York um, in 2017. And like, granted, it wasn't like a graphic novel. It was like half illustration, half comics. The comics world completely ignored it. Yeah. Like that book did not exist in that world, but it was really popular in a different world that I'm not used to, like the world of history, like uh, just like history writing, um, city stuff. Like I did a whole bunch of events. I like won a big award for it, but that stuff just didn't register in, in comics. And I was like, well, that's great. But I also like, I want my community to, I want to be part of my community. Mm -hmm. So I think that was a learning experience of like, oh, I've got to like play a little bit more in both worlds. Did you not, I mean, not to blame you for that, but like, were you promoting it within the comics community? Like, were you doing zine festivals? <laughs> um, well, because it was 2017, it was right when I just moved. I like left New York. So I didn't really do as many. I did Seattle. Um, and then like we're saying, you know, you're like, I'll put it in my Instagram stories. Like, yeah, what's yeah. The problem? Yeah. But I didn't have it sent out to a number of cartoonists and um, people doing review stuff right then. And I feel like it was just like radio silence. Mm. Like I didn't see the comics world receiving it at all. Um, and I don't know, maybe the book just sucks and I'm like, what, what's wrong? <laughs> but, you ever read your Goodreads yeah. reviews? That's <laughs> so scary. Why? Why would I do that to myself? It is really scary. I don't scary. hate myself that much. <laughs> yeah, I don't even Google mine. Like Googling, like, I, I can feel my blood pressure rise thinking about Googling my own name. I'm just like, oh God. Yeah, my cheeks feel hot right now. Yeah. Just, like, you like, said Goodreads and my whole face was like, <laughs> <laughs> Or like Amazon, like sometimes on Amazon, it'll recommend my own book like on the bottom. And I'm oh, like, yeah. oh, you see how many stars yeah. it has or whatever? You're like, oh God, <laughs> I'm not clicking on that. Get away. Uh, I used to read them and like really revel in the bad reviews or <laughs> someone would like leave a review that was like, I ordered this for my daughter for college. I don't know if she liked it, one star. And you're like, <laughs> One star, why not give it four stars you didn't even read it like why are you leaving a review those things are funny and I did I do like enjoy some of the negative press like reviews and stuff for that stuff because that people like it's their opinion so it's not invalid and it's interesting to see what other people outside of my world think um and they're not always wrong sometimes I'll read a bad review and I'm like you know what that actually is very accurate and something I should think about for the future 
So what, how, how, do you, how do you determine what stuff to take to heart? Is it stuff that you kind of feel about your own work, but you hope that nobody notices? And then a review points it out and you're like, okay. Yeah, someone will, yeah, point something out where um, I'm like, oh, maybe my character. So the whole thing with my character is like, I make myself more negative than I am in real life mm -hmm. um, or and crankier. I mean, obviously that's a facet of my personality. That's where it comes from, but it can be very grating. Um, and so when someone points that out, I'm kind of like, oh yeah, maybe I like overdid it and should step back in with the humanity at some point. So my character is not just like, oh, sar super sarcastic. Like nobody likes those characters anymore anyways. Like I don't like them. So actually the book I pitched to D&Q and Fanta, I'm glad we're rejected because it's the book I'm working on now from a fresher point of view where I'm like, well, I was a softer person in pain at that point. Why not put that in there? Why pretend to be so tough? Mm. Like that's not relatable. So I'm like redoing a lot of old work with a more honest eye for it. And that all just comes from, yeah, feedback where you realize, oh, maybe this character could just like chill a little bit. But isn't that difficult because you've worked for over a decade um, of like, like you're kind of set in that way. Like I'm gonna write this character and you, you kind of already, the character almost writes itself at a certain point. So then you have to kind of rein it in and steer it in a different direction all the time. Well, yeah, I mean, the character, because the character is me, I've changed a lot since I was, you know, 25 and starting. And if the character didn't change, that like, who wants to be a 25 year old when they're almost 40? Like that's, yeah. something's, something's wrong if you don't. And I just, I understand when people read newer stuff, especially when I do, we, as you kind of mentioned earlier, like I'll do stuff about pregnancy or the baby. And then in comments, someone will be like, remember when she just used to like run around the city and drink all the time? Those comments are so much better. And you're mm -hmm. like, yeah, but that was my life. And if I was still doing that at this, at if 40, if almost 40, I was still running around drinking all the time, everyone would be like, get that person some help. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. this isn't funny anymore. This is a problem. Mm -hmm. So, and I just, I really enjoy the capacity that everybody has for change. And when people don't change, I kind of start to almost resent them in a weird way where mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't want to re read the same stuff over and over. I want people to change and I want their work to change. So mm -hmm. hopefully other, I, I understand. I don't know. Yeah. It's just such a dumb thing to run around and be like, that band, only their first album was good. And it's like, well, then you're negating like everything else they've done. Maybe you liked the first album, but maybe a lot of people liked the fifth one. Right. Um, but also art like means something because somebody discovered it at a particular time in their life. Mm -hmm. Like somebody who was reading Far Party when they were in their 20s and it, it has a special meaning to them because of that, you know, they're going to pick up your work and be like, what is this? I'm old now. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, no. That's true. Could yeah, reflect negatively for them too. And I also, there is something very special about that, that feeling when you're young and you find work that really reflects what you're going through. Mm. Um, so it sort of like freezes that in time for you, right? Where you're like, this was so special, so relatable. And then you find out that like, uh, yeah, they just like went and bought a house and became a parent. Yeah, that could be very boring for you. I understand that. Um, and I don't, it's not bad to have that stuff. There's certainly books that were frozen in time for me and mm. then when I see that person's work now I'm like hmm, meh yeah also yeah. no one's gonna keep making the first book no one's gonna keep making the first album you know that's not no one can do that you have that first one that's special and then you move on and do other stuff you can't keep trying to do the first one and then that's just weird have you changed your visual style at all the way you draw yourself in the new book Mm, no, it's just gotten a little bit cleaner. Um, because I draw on an iPad now too. That's changed. Oh, whoa. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm a modern woman. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> uh, but, but it actually suits my work really well because it's just very simple black and white. Mm -hmm. So it's faster to do on the iPad. Um, but no, it's going to be the same sort of just a little more polished which I also understand when people don't like, because it's funny to look at the early drawings. They're like really raw and messy and like, it's funny. Mm -hmm. Also it would be weird if I was still doing that. Like, it'd be like, really, you didn't learn anything over the last 15 years. Well, do you sell your original art? Mm -hmm. I do. Um, you know, the cityscape stuff, you must sell that pretty easily. 
No, um, it doesn't sell that easily. I get so weird about pricing. I'm like, do I price this at $150 or $600? And then I'll like change it. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing happens anyways. Um, but sm- yeah, it's selling art's weird. I don't, I'm not good at the self-promotion anymore unless mm-hmm. it's like the, I have a bunch of boxes of books because when Koyama Press shut down, I got all the leftovers. So I'm like just trying to get rid of them by in clear space in my house. But then when it comes to like actual artwork stuff, I just don't really... Again, I put it in my Instagram stories and I'm like, good enough. Yeah. <laughs> Call it a day. But it'd be nice to move some of that stuff, especially now that I live in a fire zone. Uh, I would like to sell it before it all burns. Um, I, I only have a couple more questions. I don't want to keep you too long, but um, with the re- reprinting of Museum of Mistakes, um, did you edit any of the material, like anything that would have been offensive in the first printing? With this yeah. Print? Um, I took out a couple of words. Um, just to like change some things to idiot and like yeah yeah the punchline was actually like you're a retard which is a offensive and b just not funny mm-hmm. like that's just not funny um so I changed those uh, a little bit that's good. yeah and then does does that book is it going to come out you think around the same time as your new book that's hopefully that's the plan if I can finish this book in time um, then we can do both so if there's like a new reader for the new book with a you know a different publisher they would be interested in the old work mm-hmm. um, but it's so scary thinking of any putting out anything in the future because I don't know what the future is going to look like mm-hmm. like I remember like when the New York book came out it was right like on the day of the Las Vegas shooting yeah so that felt like very heavy and very grim because it was but now like every day something happens where you're like ah promoting my book feels bad like I'm afraid that I gotta it's gonna come out at a time when it's gonna feel bad again to promote work yeah that's true it is a non-stop shit show living in this country yeah. <laughs> well, it's there's a like a, it like was like supposed a- to come out last fall and like it would have been buried if it came out then yeah no one Oh my God, can you imagine like around time of the election? I feel so bad at anyone who had a book come out last year. Like no, everyone was like, shut up. Okay, well, I'll let you go because I know you got stuff going on and I took enough of your time, but thanks you a don't lot. don't have anything going on. My kid's in daycare, but yeah. yeah. Well, you can draw them, that's cool. <laughs> fine. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. You're done talking to me, that's fine. I understand.